All right, so hi everyone. My name is Vera and welcome to my stitching corner. I am going to be stitching today uh, York. It's a full coverage piece by uh, Golden Kite. So I'm just going to show you very quickly um, the preview for that if you're interested in any of the details. So hopefully it's not going to glare too much, but um, here it is, Golden Kite. I did cut out my personal information because that's how they protect their charts, is that they embed your personal information in, into every single um, sheet uh, from the charts. Um, this is the small version for York. So there's a the larger one, which is much, much, much bigger. Um, so you can see how blurry this one is. It's just 33,000 stitches. Um, and there's not much more information in here other than what it's going to look like. So I'm working in, um, I, I don't really have a system. <laughs> Most recently I've been trying to do uh, diagonals and kind of completing diagonals uh, from the bottom left corner towards the upper right corner. So I'm just filling in uh, rows like this. Um, this was an interesting piece for me because I didn't start it with um, my usual way, which is at the corner. I just started in the center um, because I thought it's such a small piece. I might as well just start in the center and see what that feels like. And very quickly I realized um, center starts is not something that is comfortable, at least for me, uh, with full coverages. And so I was working my way down, found the corner, and then started working my way upwards from that corner. Uh, but as you can see, the chart is so... It is so small, um, it's only 150 by 220, um, that I was kind of like faced with the decision whether do I work on the full width of the chart or do I break it apart. Um, and I was yo-yoing back and forth between, between doing one or the other. Um, and I still, I think I still am. <laughs> so I don't really have a, a good explanation as to why or how. Um, then at some point I got really tired of the bottom part, so I jumped into the sky and then worked my way um, from the top to the bottom. Um, yeah, so it's a little bit of a mess, but um, I think fortunately because it's such a small piece, I get to experiment with different formats of how to stitch, uh, which brings me to if you are interested in kind of like, if you're not sure what you want and you keep on researching and keep on researching, well, one of the things that you can do is um, just choose a smaller version of a full coverage and see how that works for you because um, I think a lot of the stuff that is in here can be transferable to a larger piece um, and depends on what kind of um, color scheme that chart is you know you, you might get the full range of confetti and um, anything that makes a full coverage challenging um, like this one okay I'm just going to if I haven't mentioned I've made so many mistakes with this piece by now um, I just keep on discovering them as I go uh, with the other full coverages I would hardly ever make mistakes um, not because I'm a good stitcher I just it, it wasn't complex for me but this one for some reason um, the combination of the 28 count the uh, blends the um, similar uh, brown colors, especially the lighter colors. Um, and whenever I'm stitching, and if I'm not filling in an area completely, then I sometimes don't even notice that a stitch is missing. Um, and if the colors are so similar next to each other, then I don't know which one that is, so I can't really identify them by the color, but I have to count every time. And, you know, we, we don't always count whenever we stitch. Um, so and that is a really difficult piece for me. And like I said, it's most likely the combination of um, the nature of the artwork itself as well as the fabric choice that I have in here. Um, for instance, right now, I'm trying to find where I am supposed to go next, but... So there's a long piece here, so I think it's right there. almost one lower you see even even now it's just perfect example <laughs> but on a happy note I have surpassed the 50% mark so I am 50.61% into this piece uh, which is incredibly exciting because 
I am going to try to finish it by the end of the year. I think it's doable. It's definitely, definitely not out of reach. Oh, wow, this is tight. <laughs> oh my goodness, it doesn't want to go through. That's a first. Oh my goodness. I'm like pulling as hard as I can. I think I might need something harder. Don't want to mess up the fabric or the stitching. Wow. I don't think I've ever had such a Stubborn. Let me try to poke it into a slightly different area in here. Oh, there you go. Does that ever happen to you? Oh my goodness, that was. I've never had such a stubborn, stubborn stitch. Like I've always been able to pull them through. If you're not stitching on a Lugana, um, for instance, if you're stitching 10 stitch or, yeah, predominantly 10 stitch in smaller accounts, do you, is there anyone who's using um, different fabrics? Um, just out of curiosity, because I, what I noticed with the Lugana is um, it's soft, so it's nice to kind of like to feel it on the touch, but with all this confetti, the amount of like hills and valleys that I have um, because of the softness of the fabric um, sometimes interferes with the image. So for instance, with this horse, there's a stitch in here that is like lighter and it's much, much higher than the, um, uh, what's it called? The shadow of the leg of the horse. Um, and I mean like in this case, it kind of like works because the highlight is brighter than the shadow. But um, I was just wondering if there's other alternatives for stitching full coverages um, on that higher higher count other than Lugana's. And then if you do, what kind of hoop are you using? Like, are you using a frame? Or are you using a hoop? Um, I have a piece of a, a Luca S um, canvas that I bought quite a while ago. And it's a 20, if I'm not mistaken, it's a 25 count. Um, it's a really small piece, so I don't have a, I don't have a project that would fit on it yet. Like all the projects that I have purchased are larger and I definitely don't want to start anything larger right now. But I certainly would be interested in, in trying something of a different, different fabric. Um, I think for the 25 count, it's okay. It's not as bad, especially if the confetti is not horrendously, looks terrible but 
um, for any project that does have confetti. Um, I'm just curious, throwing it out there if you have any suggestions. I'm at the stage where I'm knocking out colors as I'm as I'm stitching. So whenever I uh, mark off uh, complete stitches in uh, Pattern Keeper, I'm always checking how many more there's left, so I can knock off the whole entire color altogether. This one there's 55 more, but as you can see, I have not enough to do 55 more stitches. But sometimes you'd be surprised. Sometimes I pick up a color out of nowhere and I manage to uh, bring it to a zero and. That's always a really nice feeling. That's the beauty when you have a hundred and something colors. Each color has fewer, fewer stitches to it. Okay, 842. So this one has 33. 842. Yeah, so this one has 33 stitches left. Um, but I'll have to take a look if they all fit into this um, working area. Because if not, then... Unfortunately, I won't be able to finish it. So I just came back from the gym. I was, um, I'm trying to wake up early enough. <laughs> so I don't feel like tempted not to go because the day started and you know, you have tasks and responsibilities and errands coming up. So I'm trying to do that earlier in the morning. So I came back having a cup of coffee right now and I thought it would be perfect time to uh, to stitch and uh, have you come along. I'll have to take off, um, take a shower afterwards, and get ready because I'm working an evening shift today, which I find it's a little bit an odd. Like transition in life to to work in the evenings rather than to have your days as the main focal point. I don't know how I feel about it yet or how to navigate through it because um, I don't really like going to to bed really late at night. 
um, but then when I come home after work, I can't really sleep right away. It's like, you know, I have to kind of like wind down a little bit. Um, so I am going to bed later, which means that I'm also waking up later. Um, but then on the days that I don't work, going to sleep later and waking up later doesn't really work with my schedule. Like my biological body wants to do it, <laughs> but, um, but I can't really force myself into sleeping. I think I just made something really stupid. Um, so I stitched five stitches and then I secured the thread and then I snipped it off for no good reason. Eh? <laughs> oh my goodness. I was not thinking what I was doing. I just stitched the five stitches in here and I could keep going and, and filling them in, but I just snipped the thread. Oh, wow. Whoops. <laughs> that was a surprise. Okay. That's all right. I'll <laughs> keep on moving forward. But wow. Okay. Uh, 353. Where is it? Three, 353. Thirty-eight, twenty-three. That's an interesting blend. It has some pink and some yellow. A really pale yellow, though. It's this one. All right. So with this one, I don't think we'll be able to finish it because it's got 149 stitches left. Though everything fits within this working area, and there's it goes up in here, but then it also has some stuff in here. It depends on how much thread I'll have to carry around. It's possible, but uh, no, I think it's wishful. You know, it's the combination of the the way that the stitches are laid in the in the artwork because if they're all clumped together then you have waste less wastage with the thread so you could do around 150 stitches on a high count when you use a blend because you're using two strands and so the thread itself is much longer because you're not folding it in half or at least that's how I do it but because they're spread around can't promise but i think we're gonna get close i think we're gonna get close
okay, this time I'm marking off my stitches, but I'm not trimming the thread. <laughs> I think that's what, what it was. I think it was like autopilot the moment that I fill in the, uh, fill in the stitches in Pattern Keeper. Okay. And where was I? I was here. One, two. It must be this here or here. One, two. There's supposed to be a third stitch in here. So I think I accidentally Oh yeah, I totally accidentally stitched something in here. Okay. So you see what I'm talking about? Um Sometimes I have stitches that don't appear like I've stitched them, but they're in here or vice versa. And then it's kind of like trying to figure out what is the mistake because everything can be worked around for the most parts, as long as you're not basing the remainder of your stitches based on that mistake. So it's kind of how I resolve um, discrepancies. What an interesting blend, yellow and pink. Like this pale baby yellow and a soft pink. Almost like um, reminds me of Sunset, where you have a bit of a pinkish and yellows and oranges.
I made a mistake and then tried to correct it, and now I have this thread that is stuck inside of itself. So I'm gonna pull it out really, really carefully so I don't mess up with the fibers or the strands of the fabric. And I'm going to pull this one out as well. There you go. That's better. Hmm. Just looking for my threader. Needle first. And then the thread. And then pull it through. Another sip. Sorry, I tried not to slurp. <laughs> My apology for this a little bit. We have a big red cup, cup saying keep calm and carry on. It's big, so you can fill it up with lots of liquids. <laughs> My husband tends to break mugs whenever he's putting them into the dishwasher or when he's trying to clean them by hand. And this is the only mug that has survived. <laughs> I think I had a couple of those half liter mugs and uh, yeah, they all got chips on them. So makes me feel British though, because that is from Britain. Well, not the mug, but the, the same. I'm just looking at where to where to head over next.
So there's one stitch way, way up here. So I think I'm going to fill it in and then jump back down. Yeah, there's not much choice. Like you have to make the way there and back. And I don't definitely don't want to secure the thread back and forth again. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five. So one, two, three, four on the fifth. Perfect. And then coming down is right here. No. Oh yeah, right here. There you go. All of those colors, they're so similar to each other. They're just variations of brown and it doesn't make it any easier that they're light browns. <laughs> This piece definitely requires a lot of concentration and maybe that's why I'm a little bit less chatty than usual because I'm paying attention to the little holes and to the different colors and um, all the different um, white space combinations um, there is here between the stitches. Oh. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to wrap up this color with this strand because from what I see there's still quite a bit left but I think we'll be able to make a pretty good dent in it just 
Just gonna check there's nothing above here. Yeah, that's a good good place to end. So there's a couple more stitches in here and then a handful on this side of the um, of the lighter stitches. So I think this is a good place to wrap up with this color. And let's see how many how many stitches that was. I want to say around the 70 something. So 149, let's see. 29. Oh wow. That was more than 70. That was definitely a hundred plus. Yeah, so that gives you an idea. Um, I usually cut my threads. Um, I started cutting them with one meter. Uh, one meter lengths for the uh, DMC. So if you have two threads combined into a blend and you stitch with them, you can get about 120 stitches on a 28 count Lugana. And that was medium confetti, I would say. Like it was still within within the range of they're kind of together, but not too much together. Okay, next one is. 739 and 945. Okay. 739 right here. If you haven't seen, I keep my um, DMC on this massive. Um, those are. Um, uh, filing cabinet um, folders and I have a, a banker's box and um, this massive handwriting is my sister's she was helping me out <laughs> um, yeah so I just store my mega mega DMC um, range in a single banker's box I don't have all the colors yet uh, because I haven't stitched with everything yet, so I only get whatever I'm stitching with. 9.45. And I think, like, at this point, there are fewer and fewer um, colors that I haven't come across yet. Um, every once in a while it happens, but not as frequently at this point. And it's really nice because for my full coverages, I just bring the box, set it down next to me, and I have any color that I need um, available at hand. Um, Alright, so I haven't told you, but this color has 153 st stitches left. So based on what we've done before, <laughs> I don't think I'll be able to knock this one out. And this is a blend of... Um, cold toned cream and a warmer toned cream.
It would be nice to get another clamp on the right side of the of the frame, just the one that I have in here, um, so it doesn't like lift itself upwards. But then if I get one with a handle, then I run into the possibility of it wrapping around the handle every time I pull the thread through, so... Hmm, I'll need to come up with something. Hmm, wait a second, where am I? Yes, I think I'm here. Where they all, all the areas look practically identical at this point. <laughs>
Hmm. So there's a row of three in here. Right there. I've never stitched with the barking method, but this piece makes me wonder if the parking method is the way to stitch it um, because I am constantly looking for <laughs> for patterns of where the stitches need to go um, so even though parking is a little bit it takes a bit more um, it's longer to stitch that way from what I've seen um, and because of all the confetti in here, I think it will create a lot of bulk, but at the same time, it will also ensure that you don't have a sea of gaps that you constantly need to pay attention to. So I think from the perspective of organization of parking, the parking method would uh, be really useful for this piece. I have to mark this off before heading further because it gets complicated. And then I was here, then I'm jumping all the way to here, and I think it's this stitch here.
So I'm kind of being mindful of the time right now, or I'm watching the time because I'm starting to feel a bit um, like it's quite a while. Um, and it is, it's been 55 minutes, uh, which makes me wonder, and if you're able to type in the comments, um, like if you're stitching, just keep on stitching, but um, what is your kind of like sweet spot of the duration of how long you stitch? So I tend to, I tend to uh, stitch for about 40 to 45 minutes at a time. Um, I tend to do shorter uh, sessions, but more frequently, uh, rather than like sitting for quite a while um, and stitching. Just a second, I'm gonna find where I am. One, two, three on the fourth. One, two, three on the fourth. Um, and the reason I'm asking is um, whether when you're sitting down to stitch and turning on a stitch with me, um, do you prefer it to be closer to the hour rather than three quarters of an hour? Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what I'm trying to get at. <laughs> because I can't remember the last time that I've gone past the 40 to 45 minutes for a stitch with me. But now I'm in the middle of a thread and I really want to keep on stitching that thread and the prospect of potentially almost completing it is quite nice <laughs> no but once I finish this one I'm think I'm gonna wrap up there's just a couple of stitches in, left in here I think this is a good good place to stop and there's a couple of stitches sprinkled in here but then it keeps on going downwards in that diagonal so i think that'll be a good good place for a new thread to to pick up from so ooh, ouch poked into my nail the uh Smaller needles, the 28 count, or 28 size, um, they're much more sharp. All right, so this one has 24 left. So again, almost, almost until the end. And over the last hour, I've put 303 stitches in here. Now those are 10 stitches, so, you know, it's not as many as it could have been if it was full stitches, but, or full stitches would have been fewer. Uh, but still 300 um, in an hour. I think that's fantastic. Um, so thank you for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful day and happy stitching everyone. I'll see you later. Bye.